Hey, I'm Lisa. I'm an author, speaker, and coach, and mom to seven gorgeous kids. And in today's video, I'm going to share with you why we decided to sell everything we own for our move to Southwest Florida. So if you've been following along, you know that I have moved my family of seven kids from Toronto, Canada to sunny Southwest Florida. And oh my word, has it been an adventure. And I will put in the card some videos so you can understand why we're moving as well as the process, what the process has looked like and been like. We decided to sell practically everything and only bring with us what would fit in a six by 12 trailer. But let me tell you the process in which it took us to get to that decision was just, oh my word. Basically we vacillated. Like I just kept flip flopping and I'll be super honest with you it kind of came down to cost. So let me unpack this a little bit for you. When we first entertained the idea of moving to Florida, I did just a cursory search of what it would cost to move. I got a whole bunch of quotes and they all came in at around the $10,000 US mark. Believe you me, I appreciate people and paying them for their time. This is not for me about you know, like that being an expensive fee or what have you, but I just couldn't, for me, if I was going to pay $10,000 in US funds, I kind of was like, I'd rather just buy $10,000 worth of furniture on the other end. So we thought about it long and hard and where we landed was to just try and sell. So I started by selling as much as I could on my own on places like Facebook Marketplace. And it was pretty successful. But then <laughs> it was crunch time. We got closer and closer and closer to our move date. And I just remember being like, I'm not going to have any time. So what I ended up doing was working with a company called Max Sold. There are companies that does auctions. And I found this completely fascinating like completely fascinating how they do it essentially they send in a team who catalogs all your stuff puts the pictures up online and then in a short period like one day basically people come to your home on that specific day all the stuff is already paid for online and then they take your stuff away like it was such a simple and profitable <laughs> procedure considering how much time I spent. So sure, if I had had more time, like if I had given myself maybe, I don't know, maybe two months to sell off all my things and to do the whole process of going back and forth and back and forth with people, that's the part that I found the most time consuming and onerous with selling things on Facebook Marketplace. I would list something and people wouldn't show up. Or I would list something and then um, people would try to haggle even on things as little as $5. And then of course your time is involved there, right? So if I was billing myself out at $10 an hour, for example, for all the time I was spending selling my used goods, it was starting to add up to a lot. And so that is why I decided to try my hand at this online auction. It was a really fascinating process. And at the end of the day, we made about, I think, $3,500 selling all of our used items. Um, a couple tips if you want to go down this road of using an online auction like Max Sold. Honestly, I, I just, it was an efficient way to sell my stuff in a short amount of time. So I really, um, I really like that part of the process. And if you're interested in what it's like to um, have an auction, uh, check out the link below. So one thing that's important to note, when you do an auction through a company like Max Sold, you don't control it. Like there's no, it's a bit of a gamble. So for example, there were some pretty good deals that got, <laughs> that got, you know, sold. Like I had a fairly high-end um, bassinet that I think at the end only went for you know, $20. I think one of my sofas ended up only going for $100. Um, and it was a, a higher end piece. So you really do have to relent of a little bit of control in that way. But on the flip side, I had some items that I thought absolutely nobody was going to purchase. And they went for so much more 
than I ever thought anyone would bid <laughs> bid for. It, it was an interesting experience in that way where we actually, like I said, I netted out $3,500 approximately from my auction, which to me was you know, far greater than, um, you know, just donating everything, obviously, um, or giving it away. It was really helpful for my bottom line to be able to make $3,500 by selling all my stuff in such a short amount of time. If I were to do all of that again, I'll be honest, I probably would have given myself a little bit more time and tried to sell some of the higher ticket items on my own because that worked really successfully. My beautiful blue sofas that I have done a video about here on my channel. Those sold for really, I think, reasonable amount of money for a used sofa. I had some beautiful pieces, like some beautiful wood pieces in my foyer and in my living room that also went for what I think are reasonable prices for used items. But it really boiled down to time and I simply just ran out of time at the end of the whole process. So some of the pros of selling everything, practically everything, was that you really get rid of a lot of stuff and realize the things that you need and you don't need or the things that you think you need you don't really need it forced me to like be very you know like to let go of material items and to really examine my relationship with material goods you know I remember when particularly my blue sofas when they left my home I remember being like oh my gosh my sofas but then not feeling really that much more emotion after that. You know, I think it's healthy to develop a little bit of a, um, a healthy detachment from, you know, physical items, material goods. So that was a really interesting observation. And to be honest, it feels kind of nice to start fresh down here in Florida. Uh, I knew that some of my furniture just was not going to fit by size. And I, I, I really just wanted to design the rooms from scratch. If you've been following me for a while, you know that I have, you know, a 10 year plus career in interior design. Um, and so this is really fun for me. It's really fun for me to create um, spaces for my family. And if you come back real soon to the channel, I will share with you my main floor reveal that I'm just so excited about. But on the flip side completely, the cons of selling everything <laughs> means that you have nothing when you get down there. So in an ideal world, I would have furnished parts of the home either immediately upon arrival or before we got there. I had one version of this whole adventure where me and a girlfriend would come in and just spend a week going shopping and setting up furniture and really having the home set up to be functional before my family got there. Well, <laughs> things just didn't work out that way. And so we arrived to Florida with no mattresses. We had no furniture, no sofas, no dining room table, like nowhere really to sit. <laughs> and we lived that way for about, I don't know, maybe two weeks where we were slowly bringing in pieces. But I just found so many things overwhelming emotionally, physically. It was just a little bit tricky to as soon as we got there with seven children, limited childcare, you know, limited energy ourselves, <laughs> figure out how to furnish a home. So that's one big piece. You definitely need to have a plan for when you arrive. The other thing that was a little bit difficult about the last couple of weeks was that I was very mindful to not make decisions based on scarcity. So I was, you know, I could feel myself getting very pressured and feeling very stressed and wanting to just hurry up and do it all. But I also wanted to pick items that I knew I was going to like, that were going to stand the test of time, that were, you know, not just going to be rash purchases. And I found that really difficult as well. I found myself just sometimes being like, oh, we should just buy that. But then being like, do I really even like this? So if you do put yourself in a situation where you're feeling pressured to buy things, um, you might just want to be careful that you're not just buying things for the sake of buying things. In the end, everything worked out and I'm really excited to show you how we furnished our main floor on a budget, how we got super resourceful. And so do come back for that reveal on this channel super soon. So really what it came down to for me was a decision of value. 
I was either going to spend $10,000 and bring all my stuff down with me, or I was going to spend whatever I wanted to spend and buy new things or new to me things down here in Florida. And in the end, I just sort of felt better about going the latter route and renting a trailer. And here's the thing, I really just believe when you discern something, when you take it to prayer, when you weigh the pros and cons, you have to just make a decision and then move forward. You can second guess yourself all you want, like literally, but that doesn't really serve you. You can weigh all the pros and cons forever <laughs> and not take any action, but that doesn't really serve you. You really have to just pick and start moving in that direction. And ultimately, I'm really glad that we went this route because it allowed us to create a main floor living space that I'm truly, really happy with. So if you are thinking of doing a large move with your family or if you are just simply curious as to why <laughs> and how we got our family of seven kids down here to sunny southwest Florida, I've made for you a playlist in the cards and I will see you on the other side.